In this lesson, I'm going to teach you how to use function in Python. Functions are smaller reusable code blocks. It is like a container which contains the code to perform a specific task. Actually, we have been using functions since the beginning of this course. For example, print function, input function, and so on. Each of these functions has a specific purpose. For a small program, we can get things done without functions. But when we build a complex program, we need to break our code into smaller reusable functions. And that's what I'm going to show you in this lesson. Suppose here we have several products. We want to calculate the total cost of this product. Let's use a variable named price underscore one for the price of the first product and it is 10. Shipping cost of the first product is stored in shipping underscore one variable and the value is 5. And the discount is stored in the discount underscore one variable and it is 1. Now we can use the print function, the formatted string, to print the total cost. It is price plus shipping minus discount. OK, run the program and we can see the total price. Now we have to do the same thing for the second product. This time the variable is price underscore 2 and the value is 20. This is shipping underscore 2 and it is 5. Discount underscore 2 is 5. Then use the same approach, print and formatted string. Run the program. And here is the total price. For the third product, again doing the same thing, using different variable names. Here is the total cost of the third product. Actually, we never code like this. In this type of cases, we use functions. Remember what a function is? They are smaller and reusable code blocks. Let's define a function. We use def, D-E-F, which is the short form of define, to define a function. Then we give our function a name. The name of our function here is total underscore cost. Always type the function names in lower cases. And if there are more than one words in the name, use underscore to separate them. These are the best practices to name a function. Then use the parentheses and colon. As soon as we hit enter, the line is automatically indented. That means we are inside of this function now. Let's cut this block of code and paste it here inside of the function. These lines are indented. That means this code are inside of the function now. If we run the program, this block will not be executed. We can see the result of the other blocks. Let's remove them and run it again. This time we don't have any output. It is because this block is inside of this function and it will not be executed until we call this function. So how do we call a function? It is actually pretty simple. Simply type the name of the function with parentheses and that's it. Run the program. This time we can see the total cost. However, there is a warning here. Actually, Python wants everything well organized. When we call a function, right after defining it, it looks little messy. Python wants us to use two line breaks here. Let's add it and the warning is gone. However, there is another problem with our function. Every time we call it, it will print the same result. That means different items need different functions. But that's not what we want. We want to use one function for all products. 
to get it done, we need to use parameters. We define the parameters inside of this parentheses. So here, there are three parameters, price, shipping, and discount. Let's remove these, and in the placeholder of the formatted string, there will be price, shipping, and discount. Here, these parameters work like local variables. So what are the values of these variables? Well, still now they are undefined. Actually, when we call this function, we pass the values of this parameter. We are calling the function from here. So we have to pass the values from here. Let's say price is 10, shipping cost is 10, and the discount is 5. Run the program, and here is the total cost. Now I'm using 20, 5, and 5. Run the program, and here is the total cost. Let's assign different values. 40, 10, 1. Here is the total cost. So we do not need to rewrite the same block of code over and over again. We can simply call the function, pass the values, and get the result. Here these values are called argument. And these are parameters. Many programmers think that arguments or parameters are same, but they are not. Arguments are the value we send when we call a function, and parameters receive those values. Here the first argument is for the price, the second argument is for the shipping, and the third argument is for the discount. Now if someone who doesn't know the correct sequence and write the discount first, then the shipping, and the price is at the end, there will be a problem. We can see our program prints total cost is minus 4. Things can get worse. Suppose someone has no idea about these arguments and parameters, so he uses only two parameters. It will generate a type error. Because if there are three parameters, we have to pass three arguments. Otherwise, the program won't work. Here, this error message says missing one required positional argument. That means these arguments are positional arguments. Here, the position of the arguments matter. We already have seen that we need to maintain the positional sequence here. There is another type of argument called keyword argument. If we use keyword argument, we do not need to maintain the sequence. Keyword arguments start with the name of the parameter. Here the first parameter is price, followed by an equal symbol, then the value. This one is for shipping, and this is for discount. Let's run the program, and everything is perfect now. If we change the position now, for example, place the shipping at the beginning and the price at the end, the program still works properly. So when we use keyword argument, the position doesn't matter. Let's remove one key from here and run it. This time we have got a syntax error. Let's bring it back and remove this one. This time we have got a type error. So we should not mix positional argument with keyword argument. It creates a serious problem. So when to use positional argument and when to use keyword argument? Well, it depends on the type of the arguments. When we are passing multiple numeric values as argument, it is difficult to understand the role of those arguments. So use keyword arguments. And if the arguments are self-explanatory, if we can easily understand its role, then use positional arguments. For example, let's define another function named welcome. And the parameter is name. This function says hi to the name we will pass later on. Now call this function with a name. I'm using my name, Nurjaman Faruqi. Run the program. 
and we can see Hi Nurjaman Faruqi on the terminal window. We do not need any keyword argument here. Positional argument is enough. Let's say we want to receive the first and last name separately. So there will be two parameters, first underscore name and last underscore name. And there will be two arguments, Nurjaman and Faruqi. Let's run the program and the result remains the same as expected. So we can use keyword argument here. But it is not necessary. Simply by looking at the function, we can understand that this argument is for first name parameter and this one is for last name parameter. In this type of cases, we do not need the keyword arguments. So we have learned the basics of functions in Python in this lesson. We are going to learn more about function in the next lesson.